A wonderful day, my dear learner. We are now in the week 5 of our DRRR journey. I look forward that you were able to understand our previous lessons. As we continue our discussion, we ask our Master Creator for His presence. May I request you to offer a moment of prayer, especially with the intention of abundance and generosity for one another. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, behold each of us in your loving hands. Come fill our hearts, minds, and bodies afresh with hope. Help us to cast our worries upon you, so that we can embrace our learning today. Bless us as we study and grow together. Come and anoint those who teach and tutor us to bringer, be bringers of insight and knowledge. Lord, watch over us all. Keep us safe within you, within your almighty hand. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so once again, I am your subject teacher, and here are my contact details if you need it. Feel free to communicate respectfully. Last week, here are the things that we learned. Kindly read it aloud with me. First, disaster risk reduction is a systematic approach to identify, assess, and reduce the risk of disasters. Communities must have an active role in the development of DRRM plan in their locality. Third, the development of an emergency plan should be done with the whole family so that everyone will know their roles and responsibilities. Are there concepts that are not clear to you? Feel free to message our GCAP during our class time. An emergency plan is incomplete without the provision for survival kits. Typically, survival kits, sometimes called go bags or grab bags, are designed to be taken by an individual in case of emergency. How important survival kits are? Let us learn more about this as we move forward with our lesson. With the right material and contents, survival kits could even provide temporary shelters for your family during disasters. What should be included in a survival kit? Let us learn this topic better. For today's learning session, here are our learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to First, prepare survival kits and materials for one's family and for public information and advocacy. Second, explain DRR-related laws and policies. And lastly, appreciate the value of being disaster resilient through sustainable disaster risk reduction. The emergency plan identifies the need to come up with individual or family survival kits. Now, let us learn survival kits and materials. What is a survival kit? A survival kit enables a person to get nourishment in times of disasters. Each member of the family must have their own survival kits that is good for three days and if at home, a stock of supplies and food that is good for two weeks. Remember the rule of the, the survival rule of trees. You cannot survive three minutes without air, three hours without shelter, three days without water, and three weeks without food. Moreover, the contents of an essential survival kit. A survival kit should have enough supply supplies and tools that could last at least 70 hours, 72 hours or 3 days. Also, the components of survival kit may differ depending on the intended purpose. What are the contents of an essential survival kit? Your, your basic survival kit should be in a waterproof container and preferably as a backpack to keep hands free while carrying. 
it should contain the minimum essential as follows. Food, water, signaling instruments, first aid kits, important documents, multipurpose tool, clothing, keys, pets, and some recreational games. Also, an evacuation map is needed in the survival kit. What is an evacuation map? This is a map of the area and when you are headed is also useful. The map should include the location of evacuation sites, house of relatives, routes, and alternative routes. Just like the illustration. Let us have a short review of what we discussed about survival kit and materials. Identify the essential content of a survival kit which is being described. You can write your answer on your notebook. First, this includes sanitation, personal hygiene, items to prevent the spread of diseases. Second, an example of this is a Swiss knife which is an important part of any survival kit. And third, this includes flashlights, whistles, mirrors, glow sticks, or anything that you can use to signal for help. Okay, let's check your answer. For number one, the correct answer is clothing. Number two, the correct answer is multipurpose tools. And lastly, for number three, the correct answer is signaling instruments. Okay, I hope you got three over three. We are now done with survival kits and materials. Let us proceed to the laws and policies on disaster risk reduction. The Philippines ranked third in the 2015 World Risk Report in terms of annual exposure to natural hazards. This means that the Philippines experiences adverse effects brought by climate change than most countries around the world. With all the hazards that the Philippines faces, what steps have the government taken to ensure national safety? How can Filipinos lessen the impact of natural disasters? Let us look into the laws and policies on disaster risk reduction. What is RA10121? Republic Act 10121 or the Philippine DRRM law was signed on May 27, 2010 by then President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo during the third regular session of the 14th Congress. It is an act that aims to strengthen the Philippines' disaster readiness and risk reduction management system and provide a national framework. This law replaced the almost three-decade-old Presidential Decree 1566 or of 1978. Due to the Arroyo Aquino transition, the implementing rules and regulation IRR of the law was drafted and approved much later on September 27, 2010. This was followed by the long process of reviewing the framework of the previous National Disaster Coordinating Council NDCC to come up with a new framework. After nine months, the new framework for the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management NDRRM was signed. Finally, the NDRRMP was approved by the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council or the NDRRMC. So in a diagram, RA10121 replaced the PD1566 came up with the NDRRMF, the fund, developed the NDRRMP or the plan. It is supported by two laws, Climate Change Act of 2009 and the People's Survival Fund Act. Uses for Incident Command System, the ICS, to provide what? Control, collapse or expansion, and of course, authority and community. What are some of its salient features? First, empowerment 
of local government units (LGUs) and civil society organizations as key partners in disaster risk reduction. Next, integration of disaster risk management in the educational system. Third, disaster risk reduction and management farm fund at the national and local levels. And lastly, providing for provisions on the declaration of a state of calamity, remedial measures, prohibited acts, and penalties therefore. The National Disaster Risk Reduction Plan consists of four thematic areas, namely Disaster Prevention and Mitigation under the DOST or Department of Science and Technology, Disaster Preparedness under the DILG or the Department of Interior and Local Government, Disaster Response under DSWD, Department of Social Welfare and Development, and lastly, Disaster Rehabilitation and Recovery under the National Economic Development Authority. The goals of NDRRM3 is envisioned to be achieved by year 2028. It also... RR. We have Climate Change Act of 2009 or the RA 9729. It is an act mainstreaming climate change into government policy formulations and creating the Climate Change Commission. Second, we have also the People's Survival Fund Act of RA 1 or RA 10174, which is formulated to make amendment, amendments on Climate Change Act of 2009 by establishing the People's Survival Fund to be used by LGUs for climate change adaptation programs. These laws seek to integrate DRRM programs with climate change as the former can be direct results of the latter. Only when programs and projects have fully implemented together with the participation of all stakeholders involved can we be assured of a more disaster resilient citizenry. Not only do we prepare for disasters that are due to climate change, we will also take concrete steps to lessen the impact of climate change and its disasters on our lives and our economy. Now, let us recall the DRRR concepts you gained from our discussion. You can create a graphic organizer in your notebook if you want. First, Time must be spent to familiarize oneself with the contents of the survival kit and how to use them. Otherwise, some might find it difficult to use when it is needed. 
Second, the Republic Act 10121 was formulated to establish Disaster Risk Reduction Management Framework and the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Plan. Agencies and projects have to be created for research for coming up with a national warning system and bringing scientific information to the masses to keep them informed of hazards and risks. Your task for this week, conduct performance tasks, explain and demonstrate the uses of first aid kit, and create a narrative and reflection paper from the activity. You can see our scoring rubric and the guidelines. And I will discuss more about this during our synchronous discussion. Okay? Hello. Let us read the quote saying, Preparedness is the only way we can combat a natural disaster. In relation to our lesson, why do we need to prepare ourselves for any hazard or risk that can bring a disaster to our community? What is the importance of adhering to state laws and ordinances related to disaster risk reduction and management? You can put your insight in the attendance check of your SMU LMS account. Let us now have our closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord God, we have had a wonderful time, and we want to thank you for filling our lives with joy and peace. As we close this virtual class, we ask you, Lord, to walk with us everywhere we go. Help us to keep our word in our hearts that we may not sin against you. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Additional reminder, for next week, please be reminded of the following learning schedule. For October 11 to 15, 2021, you will have your completion period or remedial activities. And for October 18 to 22, 2021, this is the last week of first quarter, you will have to complete your performance task. Okay? So I hope that you will use these days for being productive and be able to complete all your academic requirements. For the mode of submission of your outputs, you can communicate with me through our FB Messenger or our class group chat for academic purposes. Submit your academic requirements in the SMU LMS on time. Feel free to keep in touch always. May Mary, our mother and patroness, inspire you always. God bless and keep safe always. See you in our synchronous meeting. Goodbye!